Hello, this is David for Studio One Expert. I'd like to show you another new cool feature of Studio One version 3, which, to my knowledge, has not been documented by Presonus, so the chance is high that you might hear for the first time about it here, unless you have discovered it yourself in the meantime. So what I'm talking about? I'm talking about using folders in the console. Well, kind of. We will use buses to act like folders in the console. So how can we do that? First, we need to make sure that a certain setting is checked in the options of the console, which we'll find here under this wrench icon. And I'm talking about this option here, link, expand, collapse of folder tracks with show and hide. This setting needs to be checked for that to work what I want to show you. So if you have this setting checked, then as you can see, I have a folder track here in the arrange view. And if I open the folder, which has four tracks in it, then these four tracks appear also in the console. And if I close the folder, then these tracks disappear. Now in this case, the four tracks I have here are going to this guitars bus in the console. Now wouldn't it be cool if we could hide and expand these tracks directly from the console so that we, if we are in the middle of a mixing session, we don't have to go all the time to the arranger to do that? And the answer is, yes, we can. If we go here and in this drop-down menu where we can assign a bus to the folder itself, select the same bus, this guitar bus here, then look what happens in the console. We get a small folder icon and we can open and close the folder from here. So one click here expands all the tracks in the range view but also in the console and we can also close the folder directly in the console. Now how cool is that? So our bus here basically became our folder track, more or less, with the exception of course that we can in the console insert plugins and send and everything else we can do, which is not possible with the range view, but we can of course open and hide the tracks. And now watch this. I will rename this bus here, just at 100, and look here, it got renamed in the range view as well. If you're using Studio One for a bit of time, then you know that this was not possible at all before. And if I rename the folder in the range view, the bus also gets renamed. Very, very cool. This will save a lot of time renaming buses and folders. You can do this all in one go now. Now, what happens if we have a folder with tracks inside, which are routed to different buses? Let's have a look at this scenario too. Okay, so here we got a drums folder with drum tracks inside, with two kick mics, two snare mics, two overhead tracks and two room tracks. And this is a typical scenario where you would have, where in most of the cases, um, the tracks would be routed to different buses before going to a drum bus. So if you look at the console here, our two kick tracks are going to a kick bus, the two snare tracks are going to a snare bus, the two overhead tr uh, tracks to an overhead track and the room tracks are going to a room bus first. And then all these buses are routed to a drum bus, where they are all routed together. So in this case, if we would simply go here and assign this drums folder to the drums bus, then our internal routing of the tracks would be lost. So all of the tracks then would go directly to the drums bus without going to our sub buses first. We don't want that, so how can we avoid that problem? Since in Studio One we can create subfolders inside of folders, all we need to do is create folders inside the, fo the drums folder which will represent our sub buses. So I can select my two kick tracks and create a folder for them. I have the shortcut Control F assigned for that. And then I name this kick. And then I assign this kick folder, which now sits inside the big drums folder. I assign it to the kick bus. By the way, did you notice that as soon as I assigned this folder to the kick bus, it automatically also got the color of the bus. If you haven't noticed, then watch again. I will do the, so with the, the same with the snare tracks. Make a folder track. Call it snare. And now I assign it to the snare track and watch the watch the color here on the left. Boom. 
it changed to the same color which the bus has. Okay, let me do this for the rest of the tracks now. Okay, so now all our tracks in the drums folder are sitting in subfolders. So we have a kick subfolder, snare, overhead, and one for the room mics. So if we assign now the top drums folder to the drums bus, then still our routing of the subfolders remains intact. As you can see, the kick goes to the kick bus, the snare to the snare bus, etc. But now in the console, again, we have uh, the folder icon here on the bus itself. And we can close the folder and not only the tracks disappear, but also the sub buses disappear too. So with one click, we can open the folder and also have our sub buses uh, visible or not. And as you can see here, we have also the folder icons now on the sub buses. So we can close the sub buses and the individual tracks disappear. So the, we have only our buses visible in the console. And uh, we can close this too if you want to see only the top level bus here with the drums. Now, how cool is that? To be honest, when I first used this new feature, I thought to myself, well, that's nice. But now that I can see how, how tidy you can keep a song with this, and especially for mixes with large track counts, this is really important. I think that this will really change uh, the way how I organize songs in future and how I mix. So um, I recommend that you experiment with this to see if you can uh, use it in your workflow. Now, is there any downside to all of this? Well, there is a small one actually, which I found so far. So if I route these guitars to, to no bus here again on the folder track, then um, if I open a folder, normally I was always used to having the, fold, uh, having the tracks which are going to bus on the left side. So these four tracks are going to this bus. I was always used that uh, the bus where the tracks are routed to is on the right side of the tracks. I think that many other people are also used to this. But if you actually use this option which I, sh uh, which I showed here to route this folder to the guitars, then you will always have the bus on the left side of the tracks for some reason. So even if in the options here uh, you have this option engage keep bus channels to the right, even then, no matter what you do, you see the bus will always be on the left side of the tracks. But I mean, you also gain a lot by this method. So, well, what can I say? Right? Okay, see you soon next time. I've been David. Bye-bye.